Hello friends, today's video is going to be my guest bathroom renovation. Now if you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure you do that and hit the bell because it'll tell you when I have a new video out. Okay, let's go over to the guest bathroom. This is my guest bathroom and we did a renovation and I did it on a budget. So when you do things, when you're trying to do things on a budget, there are things you're gonna have to think about. What I want to spend my money on and what I need to save it on. So the very first thing that I did in this bathroom was the floor. Now it's a tile floor. It was in excellent condition, but I didn't want to put the money in ripping it out and putting another floor down. So what I did was I painted it. Now let me show it to you. So I've got a video on how I did this and I'll put a link in the description of this video. But for a quick recap, primed the floor, cleaned it, primed it. Then I did a very dark charcoal color, two coats, and then I did an off white on top and I actually took a sander and after the paint dried, I sanded it down. I really wanted kind of an old looking tile. Now, when I was all finished, I did two coats of poly acrylic. And I know the question you're gonna ask me, so I'm gonna answer it. And that is, how has it held up? I actually did this floor two years ago and I have had zero problems with it. Very inexpensive way to make your tile look great. My next decision, was what I wanted to do with the vanity and the cabinet. Now, this is an older vanity, but it was in great condition, and I thought, I'm gonna work with it. But what I didn't like was the wood tones in the cabinet itself. So, got my paintbrush out again, and I painted it in the color Iron Ore, O-R-E. It is a beautiful black color with a little bit of gray, and it turned out great. I didn't want to replace the hardware. It was silver, so again, I got more paint out, except this was Rub and Buff. And I've had a lot of you ask, because I had another video how I used Rub and Buff. Let me tell you, once you do Rub and Buff, it's there to stay. I love to incorporate a little bit of old with new. And my daughter and I have gotten addicted to going to antique shops. And on one of our excursions, we found these adorable little silhouettes. Now this one came just like it was in a black frame, but this one was framed in a beige. And so I broke out the paint again and I painted the frame. Always think outside the box. What can you do to change something to make it the way you like it? So I just painted it black, hung it on a nail, and this might sound silly, but my nail was silver and I thought, don't like that. So I took my little rub and buff, hit that top of the nail and made it gold. Here is another little cute item we found at the antique store, a little cute soap dish and it had gold on it already. And that went with everything else that I was doing in this bathroom. And another thing I did was I took that wallpaper and I covered the light switch and I used Mod Podge that just added a little bit of character to the bathroom. So what is common in a lot of bathrooms is they put the one big mirror up and they glue it to the sheetrock. So if you've ever tried to remove a mirror, it is pretty difficult. I'm gonna say though, Scott got that mirror off without breaking it, but it left gouges in the sheetrock. And he says, I am not a sheetrock person. So he came up with this idea of going ahead and framing it in with wood, running the shiplap vertical, and I love the way it turned out and he didn't have to do any sheetrock work. So in this bathroom, we had just the one vanity light at the top. And before Scott put the wood wall up, I already showed him what I wanted and that was I wanted two sconces hung on a, beside a smaller mirror. And he had to run those wires before he put the wood wall up. These sconces I got on Amazon, and anything I got on Amazon, I promise I'll put a link in the description of this video. But back to my point of where to put money, where to save it, what makes a big impact. And to me, having these sconces and one smaller mirror in the middle 
was a big impact. Another thing I got off of Amazon was this new faucet. But guess what? I am not going to put a link to it. Scott told me no go. He said that this one was very difficult to install and so his suggestion was go to Home Depot or Lowe's. So no link on this one but luckily I got a smart guy that figured out how to install this. Now I incorporated more gold into this bathroom and I got a towel holder as well as a toilet paper holder. So really my main three colors in this bathroom were white, black, and gold. The grate in the floor, didn't need to buy a new one. What did I do? Yeah, you've already said it. I broke out some spray paint and spray painted in the yard, popped it back in. Didn't cost me hardly anything. So just like all of you, when I get ready to do a renovation, I am on Pinterest scrolling through ideas. There's some brilliant people on Pinterest. I knew based on some of the pictures I saw that when I wanted this board and batten put up, I didn't want it put at halfway level. I really wanted it a lot higher and one of the reasons I did that was because I knew the wallpaper I was going to choose was going to be busy and so I didn't want too much busy going on in this room. For the wallpaper, I love toile and I love birds so when I saw this I knew it was perfect. Black and white really made this room look a little old world. For my shower curtain rod, yeah, I'm gonna say it again. <laughs> I took it out in the yard and I spray painted it gold. The one thing I did a little bit different is after it dried and I put it up on the very ends, the finial parts that attach to the wall, I actually added a little bit more rub and buff to give it a deeper patina. And you can put rub and buff over spray paint. It works really, really well. If you've ever tried to look for an extra long shower curtain, kind of hard to find. So what I did, I went on Amazon and I bought a pair of linen drapery panels and I sewed them together. And these, the ones that I chose, were called tab backed. And that just means on the back of the curtain there's tabs where you would normally run a drapery rod. But I put the shower curtain rod through it. I really did not want to have the look of rings. I really wanted it to look like a drapery panel. So it was super easy to do. Now you're gonna wanna add a shower curtain liner. So how do you do that without getting it to show? No problem at all. Get another shower curtain rod, a thinner one, and get your liner, put it on that, and you can hide it behind the front shower curtain. We have got a huge renovation coming up. We are getting ready to finally do our kitchen and it's going to be a series of videos. So make sure you subscribe because it's gonna be super fun. Everybody, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.